All right, we're live, folks. We are live for our WD forty. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna put it right here, mom. guys ready for some WD-40? Because we're about to spray it on every one of our joints. You guys are going to feel amazing after this session, all right? The WD-40 club, are you a part of it? We don't let everybody in this club, all right? This is invitation only. It's the only time I'm doing this. Whoever shows up today, you're going to get an invite to the next one. Because not everybody gets this special treatment with the WD-40. WD-40. It's the only thing you're going to need today is your body, Try to get on a piece of carpet or it could be a workout mat. I wanted to do this in the home so you guys can see how you can implement these incredible tools and protocols that I'm going to give you today. You can do it in your, in your comfort of your own home, right in your living room, or you can do it outside in your driveway, or you can do it in the backyard, or your basement, whatever, garage. Right? But the only thing you're going to need is your body. Something comfortable for your feet and your body to go on. This is a Cuban mop, all right? For all you guys in Miami, you know what a Cuban mop is. For everybody watching that might not be in Miami, it's a, it, it's a broomstick, okay? Just get a broomstick. You can take off the end of it if you'd like, because we're going to be using this for some upper body shoulder mobility work. I'll show you how to use this in a few minutes. Once we get done with your full body joint by joint mobility, we're going to do some upper body stuff I want to teach you with this Cuban mop, all right? So we'll get to that in a second. So find a broomstick or a rake, something in your garage or something in your pantry. I know you got something in there you can use for that, all right? So let me, my, my beautiful daughter is filming this for me. Thank you, Lila. Let me see yeah. who's on with us. May need to give some people a couple more time. Hi, Kylene. Dallas, let's do it, baby. Chad Long, Bonnie, hey, mom. Gloria, there's mom, baby. Hello. <laughs> All right, so make sure you got a little bit of room, okay? We're gonna start at the feet, the most undertrained, most overused part of the human body is the feet, and second, well, it's a, it's a toss up between the hands and the feet, all right? But the feet are very undertrained. So here's how I want you to do this, okay? We're gonna start right here, okay? The top of your foot, and we're gonna drop. So I'm really opening up the front part of this foot right here, all right? We're starting at the lower body. So I'm gonna dip that knee, dip and straighten. Dip and straighten. So I'm really allowing the tissue on the top of your foot to open up, okay? Now we're gonna do, that's called a middle toe pull, right? We're opening up the front part of that left foot, okay? So now I'm gonna show you a back view on this. We're gonna stay on the same foot, okay? Outside toe pull. So now I'm on the outside of the foot, and I'm actively kind of dragging my foot to the left, pulling as I bend the knees to really traction out the lateral portion of that left foot, okay? So the first one was a middle, middle toe pull, so we're opening up the front, the shin, and the front part of that foot, and the second one is the outside, okay? So one more time. Here's the front part, opening up the front part of that foot. Okay, and now we're gonna go to the outside part of that foot. Okay, three to five passes at each one of those, okay? Let's go to the right foot, okay? Middle toe pull, drop the knee, and I'm actively kind of applying some pressure through the floor through the top of that foot so I can really elongate that fascia. I'm really trying to open up the fascia on the front part of that foot as well all the way up into the peroneals and the tibialis and all that front part of the shin, okay? Let's go outside toe pull now, okay? I'm going outside, and now I'm actively pulling to my right. I'm tractioning out the outside portion of the right foot, tractioning out, tractioning out the outside portion, okay? Now, grab your stick or chair, or something to give yourself a little bit of stability here, okay? So now I'm gonna go to some toe circles. So 
or ankle circle, excuse me. So I'm gonna go full range of motion. Now that we got the fascia all opened up, now let's do some joint moves. And I wanna do three to five circles, right foot. Okay, let's do this together. I'm on the right foot. I'm going three to five circles clockwise. And now I'm gonna go three to five circles counterclockwise. Just like so. Left foot, point that toe. Big circles. We're gonna go three to five each direction here. Shoes are off, you're on a comfortable piece of carpet or workout mat, something. But I promise you guys, if you do this, even if it was just like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and implement some of the other things that you got from the downloadable ebook that I sent you guys, you guys should have downloaded that ebook already. There's a video in this of, a video in the ebook of this exact sequence. I'm gonna add some, some cool stuff to this, okay? If you still need this for some stability, don't be afraid to use it, okay? We're gonna go up the chain. I'll use it just for you guys, right? But you don't, you know, some people may not need it. I'm going up the chain. We're going from the feet to the knee, okay? So here, I just wanna do knee extension, okay? That's all I want. Knee extension, squeeze that quad, pull the toes back to your face. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. We'll do three to five on that. And we're gonna go all the way from the feet, all the way to the head and neck, all the way down to our fingers. And then we're gonna do some stretching. And you guys are gonna feel amazing. I really, really appreciate you guys being with me during your little lunchtime break. Hope you guys are safe and quarantined and all that stuff. All right, now let's go back to the knee, right leg, circles. So we just did extensions, now I wanna do circles. So we're gonna go three to five each direction. I'm on the right knee right now. My knee is 90 degrees, my hip is 90 degrees, and I'm really trying to take that whole knee. Circles, three to five, left leg. We're gonna balance your that right leg, whatever leg you're standing on, you're gonna get some work on this. That's some stability happening at the other leg. Three to five each way on those circles. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna get this out of my way. Now I'm gonna go back to the right leg, watch this. I'm gonna add some hip flexion with knee extension. Watch this flow. Arms out to the side. I'm going up and out. Up and out. Flex the hip and extend the knee. Flex and extend. Flex and extend. Flex and extend. Let's reverse it. Flex and extend. Just going the other direction now. I like my arms out to the side, kind of creating some tension. And that'll help give you guys some stability and help you with the balance. Same thing here, up and out. Hip flexion to knee extension. Hip flexion to knee extension. Waving and waving, let's reverse it. Wave, wave, wave and wave. Nice work, all right? You see anybody have any questions out there? Are we getting any comments? What's going on over there, Lila? Anything? Uh, yeah. A lot of comments. Okay. All right. We'll get to it in a minute. You guys leave any questions or comments, and Lila and I will get to them in a few minutes, all right? Let's go back to this right hip, okay? Straight up hip flexion. Take it up. Take it up. Arms out to the side, or you can hold on to a chair, or that dowel rod, your Cuban mop. Don't be laughing about my Cuban mop, man. I'm from Virginia, but I'm in Miami now, baby. I got a Cuban mop. Left side. I know Gloria Wilder knows what a Cuban mop is. So hip flexion, taking it up. Okay, going back to right side. Watch this, pendulum swing. Use it or lose it, guys. Use these joints or you're gonna lose the range of motion. And when you lose range of motion, what do you get? Compensation patterns. Compensation patterns lead, lead to imbalances. Imbalances lead to pain, right? Discomfort, injuries. Here we go, watch this one. I'm going up and over, mic on the right leg. Up and over, reverse it. Think about going over top of a fence or some chair, small stool, I'm going up and over. Lay it down and come back to starting position. Up and over, up. I've been doing this sequence or variations of this sequence since 2007. It's a part of my life now. And I want you guys to make it a part of your life too. That ebook 
that I gave you guys, and if you don't have it yet, I'll send you a link to it. Just say it in the comments, and I'll send you the ebook because it has a lot of really great tools in it to help you guys stay limber and stay loose and and enjoy the freedom of having mobility. It's just, it's empowering to have these tools in your toolbox. All right. So now we're done with the hips. All right, hip joint at least. All right. Now we're going to work on anterior posterior pelvic tilts. Okay. So watch my hips here. I'm going to tuck the hips underneath me and I'm going to arch. Tuck and arch. Tuck and arch. Tuck and arch. All right. Now we're going to lateral side to side. Side to side on these. I'm kind of using my hips. I'm going up side to side. Side to side. All right, let's put it together in a circle. Get your mind out of the gutter, too. I'm going in a big circle. Tuck the hips underneath you, to the left, to the right. Let me give you a back shot here. To the right, tuck, left, arch. Right, tuck, left, and arch. Let's reverse it and try to smooth it out for me. Smooth it out. Smooth out those hips. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Now we're going to do what's called lumbar circles. All right. So we're going every single joint. Okay. So wide base of support at the feet. Okay. Watch me here. Arms up. I want to go to the right side flexion. And I'm going to lead with my left shoulder. And I'm going to let my head and my arms hang. I'm going to come around in extension. Back to the right and side flexion, left shoulder lead, let it hang. <sighs> Extension, we're going to do one more time, three to the right, three to the left. <sighs> Head down, arms hang. If you guys are feeling any pain or discomfort, either change up the range of motion or take the exercise off. So many people have low back issues, but a lot of times it's not because of anything other than it don't move enough. You're, you're lacking mobility to hips and you're quite frankly probably weak, right? So there's a lot of, er, lot of things that could be the issue, but in, improving hip mobility is gonna be probably the best thing I could ask for you guys if you have a little back pain, all right? I'm gonna give you a back shot on this one. We're going to the left, okay? Left side, side flexion, right shoulder lead. And extend. Left side, side flexion, right shoulder lead. And extend. One more time. Breathe, breathe, breathe and move. I like to think of mobility as like an alphabet of movement. You're really good at letters that you go into often, right? You're really good at doing the same things over and over again, but that might be A, D, K, L, O, and Z. But the in-between letters, you never go in those, into those movement patterns. So what happens when you don't use those movement patterns? That's where pain resides. That's where discomfort resides. So we need to get really good at the alphabet of movement. And that's what this sequence is all about. Improving mobility from every single angle that your joints are allowing you to have. And then you're less likely to have pain and discomfort, right? Your body will make that range of motion more available to you as you use it more, okay? All right, so we're done with the lumbar. Let's go to the spine. Gloria Wilder's favorite one, okay? So on this one, shoulder blades together and push away and round that upper back. Tuck your hips underneath you. Think about Superman ripping up, ripping open his shirt. Rip open the shirt, shoulder blades together. Exhale, tuck hips. And I'm reaching for the wall. Inhale up, exhale in. Inhale up, exhale in. One more. Beautiful. Feels good, right? You guys feeling good out there? Leave some questions and comments. Give us some thumbs up if you're out there. And remember, I know we're live right now, but if you don't have time to do this now, it'll be recorded for you to come back to later. So if you have any questions or comments, Ask them and ask them right now, and I'll come back and answer them later. If you need the ebook that features all these things that I'm giving you today, I'll send it to you, and you can start doing these things on your own at home. Okay? 
So now, let's work on some spinal waves, okay? So on this one, I'm waving. I'm, see, I'm sticking the chest out and waving into that position we were just in. Stick the chest out. So I'm kind of just integrating, right? We went from here, and now I'm just integrating in some waving patterns. And now let's go the other way. Other way. Move that spine. If it, even if it doesn't look like what I just did, right? Or you think you're a little, it looks funny, or you're embarrassed to move like that. It doesn't matter. Move your joints. Move it. Movement is medicine, okay? All right, so look, now let's go to the upper back. We just got the spine, lumbar, now go to the upper back. Yes? You're yes, doing baby. good. Huh? You're doing good. Okay, well, thanks, honey. All right, arms are up. Think, think that you guys are holding on to a towel in each hand. I want to wring out the towel, and I'm going to the left. Let's wring it out and go to the right. So I'm kind of gliding. Glide and rotate. Glide to the left and glide to the right. Let me give you a side view on this. Glide to the right. Glide to the left. Glide to the right. Go on the other side. Front view. Watch my hands. I'm rotating. Allow that shoulder to go down. I'm going side to side. Reaching. Reaching. Reaching and rolling. Okay? Now let's get some shoulder rolls in. So the key, what I want you guys to learn from this, is each one of these are individual movements, right? They're individual mobility drills. So I always tell you guys, I'm not interested in you snacking on food all day. You guys probably know how I feel about snacking, right? I'm not a fan of snacking on food, but I am a fan of snacking on movement. So there's no reason why you can't, throughout your day, strategically place movements. If you're in, in the kitchen, or you're at the field playing with your daughter at the playground, or you're in line at the grocery store, you're always looking and seeking opportunities to move. So once you learn these movement patterns, you'll start to learn how to integrate them in throughout your day, even if it's not a dedicated uh, practice like we're doing right now. Do this too, but throughout your day, throughout your week, you can start using some of these movement patterns to help you, right? The more you do it, the better you're gonna get at that alphabet of movement, okay? Let's move on, all right? So next movement, right? Let's go to the shoulders, all right? So I want both arms up, just like this. You're doing such a great job, honey. Thank you. Okay, shoulder circles, shoulder circles. Okay, go in each direction. Okay, so arms to my ears. Now let's come down here, 45 degrees. So I'm up a little higher, not at my ears anymore, but I want shoulder blades in your back pocket. And we're going each direction, each direction. Now let's go parallel with the floor. Circles, circles, go down, just follow, follow me. Each direction. Good, let's go out to the side. We're getting a little isometric shoulder workout here too. You guys are gonna feel good after this. You're gonna feel amazing after this. WD-40 on these joints, Anne-Marie. Okay, shake it out a little bit, okay? Right arm only, let's go figure eights. Figure eights. Okay, reverse it, stay with me. And after this, we're gonna do, finish up the mobility with some stretching. I'm gonna show you how to use your own house, to use objects in your own house to stretch. So you guys can continue to work on your daily mobility because you're seated all, all the time. We sit too much. You're in a chair, you're in traffic, you're at your desk, you're at the dinner table, you're on the couch watching TV. Enough is enough, all right? Shake it out, shake it out. Shoulder rolls, play with it, play with it, play with it. Okay, let's go to the neck, right? That's where we gotta go next, right? Let's stay in order. So arms out to the side, Reaching for the floor, so shoulder blades in your back pocket, okay? Nice upright posture, and I'm gonna go left to right. Let's go to the neck. I'm starting to feel really good right now. I hope you guys are. Just follow along with me. You can use some of this stuff in your own office when you get back to work. Hopefully, we'll be back to work soon. 
Side to side. Let's go tilts. Tilting. No rules. No rules on it. Just stay out of pain. We can have some discomfort, but we're not necessarily looking for pain. This is not a no pain, no gain situation. Okay, watch this one. I'm going forward and pull it back. Tuck that chin in and extend the way. Good. I'm constantly kind of reaching for the floor of my fingertips, right? Depressing that scapula. Watch this one. Lateral glide. This one's tough for people. But what I'm trying to do here is keep my forehead in line with my chin and my nose. So everything's kind of staying vertical. So try not to let this happen. We already did tilts. This is more of a lateral glide, a neck glide. Neck glide. It's tough for some people. We don't really go here very often, right? But injuries take place in positions your body never goes in. So don't be surprised if you get injured in a position you never see. You have to expose your body to as many positions as possible. So then when you go there, you're less likely to feel pain, discomfort, or injure yourselves, right? Let's put that whole movement pattern together. So I'm going to go forward, lateral to the right, back. Lateral to the left. Forward, lateral, back, lateral, forward, lateral, back. Let's reverse it. Forward, to the left, back, right, forward, left, back. Let's smooth it out. See, see if you guys can smooth it out for me. Reverse. Smooth, smooth, and smooth. Let's stay on the neck, okay? I'm going to go right armpit, look down, and look up. Down and up. Perfect. Stay at the armpit, right side. I'm going cross body, looking over your left shoulder. And down. Cross body, left shoulder. Okay, neutral. Let's go left armpit. Up and down. Good. Armpit. Let's go right shoulder, cross body. Right shoulder, cross body. Beautiful. Let's put it together in figure eight. I'm going to go cross body, armpit. Cross body up, down, up, down, up, down. Let's reverse it. Up, cross, up, down, up, cross, up. Down. You guys see that? And play different angles. You're just doing figure eights and reverse figure eights. This kind of get, can get a little confusing if you've never done it before. But rewind this, watch it again. The better you get with this, just like anything, practice makes perfect, right? I want you guys to do this on a regular basis, at least three times a week, if not every single day. Make this a part of our morning routine. You should definitely make this a part of a daily morning routine. It'll change your life. Okay, where are we going next? Baby, what do you think we're going next? Mm. We just finished the neck, we've done the shoulders. What's next? What joint's next? Uh, the elbows? You got it. Let's go to the elbows. So thumbs up for me. Hitchhikers, watch this. I'm gonna go in, drop that elbow in, and circle it out. So the focal point is kind of that thumb. I'm taking it in, in coming around, and out. In, and out, in, and I'm out. Let's reverse it. Yeah, switch, left arm in, and circle it out, in, and out, in, and out. I'm breaking a sweat right now. Let's reverse it. You guys feeling good out there yet? In and out, in and out. Shake it out a little bit. Watch this one, I like this one a lot. So I'm gonna go here. So I'm kind of twisting and rotating. And I'm gonna show you a little trick. This is a great one in of itself. But I'm gonna integrate it a little bit more. I'm gonna take it up. See if you guys can see what I'm doing here. See if you recognize something. I'm just moving. If you don't do it perfect, that's okay. So I'm on the elbows. I'm going to integrate this in to that arm screw lateral rotation. 
Remember this? Remember that? Okay, that's all we're doing. It's kind of integrating the elbow into that arm screw. So it's a nice little variation that you guys can do right there. Shake it out. Where are we going next? Let's go to the wrist. Watch this one. I want you to paint the wall in front of you. We'll go up, wrist up, exhale down. Inhale up and exhale down. Inhale up and exhale down, All right? Inhale up one more time and exhale down. Good, shake it out a little bit. Watch this, okay? Now, knuckles, wrists, fists parallel with the floor, okay? What I wanna do here is go out and in. Out and in, okay? So, so watch me. Try to keep your knuckles, don't turn the knuckles. Try to keep them parallel with the floor. In, out, my elbows are tucked into my rib cage. In and out, okay? Now let's go up, out, down, and in, okay? Up, out, down, and in. Let's reverse this, watch this. Out, up, up down. in, and up. down. Out, up, in, and down. Let's see if we can smooth that out. Okay, up, out, down, and around. Up, out, down, and around. Reverse. Getting these wrists. All these people with carpal tunnel syndrome. We're loosening those wrists up. Shake it out. Okay, let's go wrist circles. Watch me. So I'm really kind of drawing a circle with my index finger. Think about drawing a big circle with your index finger. I'm going clockwise right now. Okay, now let's reverse it. I'm going to go the other way. Index finger lead, counterclockwise. Index finger lead. Think about drawing a big circle with your index finger. Okay, three to five circles each direction. Shake it out a little bit. Let's go to the fingers. This is where I start to feel really good. People think I'm really weird when I do this outside, but you don't care about what people think. Because most people are broken and sick. So if, if sick and broken is normal, I want you guys to be abnormal, okay? So don't worry about what people think of you outside. People staring at you, all right? Thumb circle, here we go. Try to move independently. The digits do not move together. I want them independently. I'm going three to five, each direction. I'm on, the, I'm on the thumbs right now. Okay, index finger. Nothing else moves. You guys should be feeling good right now. I'm feeling amazing. This is when I start getting like a little obnoxious, making bad jokes. Middle finger. Nah, I'm just playing. I never make a bad joke. Middle finger, reverse it, right? I'm always funny. Ring finger, ring finger, reverse. How you guys doing out there? Tell me how you feeling out there. Pinky, reverse. Nice, shake it out. Okay, thumbs only, watch this. Thumb flexion, okay? Flex those thumbs, and I want to wave it out in extension. Flex and wave. So I'm not just opening and closing. Flex and wave the thumb out. Flex the thumb and wave out. Flex and wave. Flex and wave. Let's reverse that. Flex it and wave out in extension. Flex and wave. Flex, wave. Flex and wave. Beautiful. Shake out your hands. Almost done with joint by joint mobility. We're about to go to the couch, get our hip flexors opened up. All right, look, all the fingers, flex them and wave them out. So I'm going joint by joint, knuckle by knuckle, wave. Flex and wave out in extension. Flex and wave. Pay attention, Milo. Flex and wave. Reverse it, flex them, and wave out in extension. Flex, 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 wave in extension. Flex, flex, flex. Wave out an extension, shake it out, shake it out. Woo, okay, look, okay signs. Give me two okay signs, all right? I'm gonna do a pinky lead. Pinky lead wave to ice cream cone. Think about you holding onto an ice cream cone. Now I'm gonna reverse it. Index finger lead back to okay sign. So really spread out those fingers, wave them. Think about waving the fingers apart, and waving them into ice cream cone. Wave in the okay sign, wave in the ice cream cone. Wave, so this, you have a problem with this one? Kind of make a hand like this and wave around. Give yourself something to kind of a feedback 
system. I'm going around my hand, waving around my hand. Pinky lead, index finger lead. So I'm really focusing on waving. I'm playing the piano, right? You can play with all different types of patterns here. I can wave different ways. Ice cream cone, okay sign. Play the piano. Ice cream cone, okay sign. Check it out. Just use your daggone fingers and hands, man. Dexterity. We use these things all the time and we never do anything for our hands and our feet. So focus on this hand movement because it's going to help you with everything else that's that it's attached to, okay? So there we go. There's our joint by joint mobility, all right? Now, grab your sticks. I'm going to give you a second. Let me break this thing. I'm going to come over here to the camera and see if I can answer any questions real quick before Alex. Matthew, Benjamin, what's up? Kim Moore's on, good. What's up, Brian Drennan? Mom, thank you. We got a, I know we have a great person here taping. Eric, thank you for being here, sir. Josh, what's up, Kathy? Mihaela, awesome, guys. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like if you're, if you're enjoying this, if you're getting something from this. I'm so glad you're here. All right, so get ready to grab your sticks. We're firing this thing up, Dallas Strager. We ain't done yet. We ain't quite done. Grab your sticks or your Cuban mops. If you're in Miami, you grab your Cuban mops. You know what I'm talking about, Miami. Got the gringo in Miami. All right, look, grab that stick and we're about hip width apart, okay? Slight bend to the knees, okay? And we're gonna take our arms to our ears. Be careful, baby. Arms to our ears. There's a side view. So I'm creating some tension through this stick. So I don't want you guys just holding onto it with no intention. Really, almost like you're breaking it. Create some tension through that stick. As you're moving, you're moving through tension. Moving through tension. So I want five like this. Five shoulder flexion, okay? Let's go to the right hip, okay? Right hip. I'm going up. Notice how my right elbow stays straight. You guys are going to want to break it. No breaking at the elbow. No flexion at the elbow. I'm going right up here. Arms straight. Right hip. Arms to my ears. Try to keep your hips neutral. Try not to let your hips turn on this one. Okay? This one's a hard one for a lot of people because a lot of people are lacking thoracic rotation. Okay? A lot of mobility at the T-spine we're lacking. Five. Oof. Left hip. Okay? And we're up. I'm gonna give you a back view on this. Hips are neutral. Try to keep that back elbow locked out. You guys should be feeling really good right now. Tension through the stick. Tension through the stick. Beautiful. What if you don't have one of those types of sticks? So look, I do this outside all the time. Great question. And I'll do the same thing right here. I don't even need the stick. Right? I'll show you guys, you can do everything we're doing right now without the stick, okay? So if you don't have a stick, try to mimic me as if uh, you don't have one. And same thing, okay? This is just a great feedback tool to have so you can feel so much with it, okay? Here's the next one, arm at our side, and I'm gonna go to my right ear, and back to starting position. So on this one, I'm on the right side of my head, my right arm is opening up my left shoulder. So I'm actively kind of pushing to open up my left shoulder right now. And I come right back to starting position. 90 degree angle at the top of that elbow, at that right elbow. But I'm going to the right side of the head. I'm really opening up left shoulder though. So think about, oh, as you go to the right side of the head, the goal is to open up left shoulder. Beautiful, let's switch sides. Now I'm on the left side left side of the head and I'm opening up the right shoulder. So try not to hyperextend or arch your lower back on this one. That's why I like to keep my knees slightly bent and my hips tucked underneath me so I don't go into hyperextension in my lumbar. We don't want to compensate. There we go, five each side. Let's go back to the right, watch this. I'm gonna go back up, we've done this, but now let's go other side. We're going to integrate this into a figure eight. So a little bit more dynamic. Up to the ear, cross body. Up to the ear, cross body. Up to the ear, crossing. 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 Beautiful. 
One more. Good. Starting position. Watch this. Going back to the right side. Drag it behind your head. Left hip. Left side of the head. Drag it behind the head. You guys with me? Right side, drag. Left side, drag. Right side, one more each. Drag it. Left side, drag it. Beautiful. How'd that feel, guys? Good? All right, watch this one. Now I'm gonna go. My hand width never changes. It's about hip width. Throughout this whole series, my hand, my hand width does not change from this, all right? Now I'm gonna go right over my head. Okay, and I'm gonna go side to side. So now I'm opening up that rib cage. I'm actively pulling, actively pulling on that stick to open up left side of rib cage. Active left side pull to open up right side. Good? How'd it feel? Awesome. All right. Now, let's go to the floor, to one of my favorite, actually we're gonna to go to a couch, because they call this a couch stretch, so come on over here with me. You guys go to your couch, or a chair, I'm gonna show you two different ways, okay? So over here, we have a chair, okay? I'm gonna show you a couch stretch, and I'm gonna show you a chair stretch. And now that everything is opened up, we've gotta to get to the front part of these hips, so the hip flexors, right? You can do this in any chair in your office, or you can do it at home, but I'm stepping back. My shin is going to the top part of that, of the couch or the chair, okay? And I'm putting my knee in the crook of the couch or the crook of the chair right here, okay? So I'm in hip extension and knee flexion all at the same time. This is a huge stretch for the front of your hips. Remember, we sit like this all day long, all the, all the time, we are stuck in Flexion, right? So we need to open that up. So this is a great way for you to do this even while you're watching TV, right? So I'm hanging out here. I'm gonna squeeze my left glute. So squeeze that left glute. Left arm up, okay? And now I can lean to my right a little bit here. So this opens up this whole line. This whole line right here. The lat, the rib cage, the serratus, all the way down to my TFL, my hip flexors, all these muscles, but I'm really actively squeezing my left glute at the same time. So focus on tucking the hip, squeezing that left glute. You guys feel that on the front of your left leg right now? If you don't, you might need to back up a little bit and see if you can get into more um, hip flexion where you can maybe step out a little further. But what I don't want you guys to do is kind of drive this movement at the lower back. Okay, that's why I always say, tuck the hips underneath you. Tuck them versus arching your lower back. We'll lose the stretch there, all right? Let's switch sides. And I'm gonna do this on the couch over here. So follow me over here, Lila. So we're going from a chair to a couch. It's the same thing. And now I've got a TV in front of me. So there's no excuse. You guys can do this at home while you're watching on the commercials, okay? So I'm gonna step back, right leg back. There's that knee. Now I'm in hip flexion, hip extension, along with knee flexion at the same time, just like we're in a chair. You can do this at your desk at work too. Tuck the pelvis, so I'm not arching, I'm not driving this movement at my lower back. I'm driving, I wanna focus on the front part of that right hip, okay? Tuck the hips, squeeze the right glute. Woo! I need to do this more often. I'm guilty of not doing this enough. Let's go right arm up. Grab it with your left arm, hang out. Let's all lean to the left. Bend that elbow a little bit. Kind of frame your head with that elbow. Come back to starting. Let's reset. Back off a little bit, squeeze that glute, tuck the hips underneath you, lean forward a little bit, and let's go side flexion again. Woo! One more time, back out, reset. Tuck the hip, squeeze that right glute, grab the hand, and let's lean to the left. Nice. Woo! Brutal. 
But that's the couch stretch. Extremely powerful bang for the buck movement for every human being because we are a culture that sits way too much, right? So let's take it back to your gym mat or your carpet. We're going back right over here. And the next most important, that you have low back pain, this whole sequence from the couch to this right here, okay? Feet flat, arms behind you. Now, my feet are about probably a little bit more in shoulder width apart, and all I want to do here is roll my right knee to my left heel. So a common mistake I see here is the feet are too close together. So we want to open up. So right knee at left heel, and then I'm going to switch left knee to right heel. So I'm going side to side here. This is called windshield wipers. So internal, external rotation at the deep hips. We are deep in those hips right now. You can use this in the airport, like like waiting for your plane? Absolutely, I think mom does it, I know I do it. I, before I go on a plane ride, I always do this sequence. The core four matrix, it's in the ebook that I'll send you guys. But the core four matrix is one of the most bang for the buck, powerful sequences that I've ever taught. Um, and it helps with almost everything. Lower back pain, knee pain, hip pain, shoulder, neck pain. All right, so watch out what I did right there. So I came left side, and I'm gonna go into the right side, all right? This is the core four matrix. Let's just go through it now, all right? So I'm kind of falling into a modified pigeon pose or a 90-90 stretch, all right? So what I wanna do here is I'm on the right side, okay? I'm on the right shin. My torso is over the right shin. I'm leaning, I'm hinging into this. Common mistake made here is people fold over. I want you to stay long, your head and neck in line with your spine, and I want you to fold over. And I'm kind of using my arms here to help keep me over top of the shin. And I'll even use my right arm to kind of push me towards the foot. So I'm, I remember, we're, we're trying to increase our alphabet of movement here. So I'm trying to get in some nooks and crannies. Nooks and crannies. Ah! I don't know, what have what I ever used that for? You never. That's a good, a good one, like rigmarole. Rigmarole is a great word. But... Look, we're getting into some corners, right? Nooks and crannies, okay? Chest is up, leaning into the shin, hinging into that shin, right? Now I'm gonna change my angle. Trunk angle now goes over the femur or the right knee. So I'm hinging over here now, hanging out, shifting weight side to side. Use your arms to kind of floss around a little bit. See what you can find. Go fishing, go fishing. I'm looking for some tightness, I'm looking for some discomfort, hanging out. If you find some pain, maybe back off a little bit. We're not really looking for pain, but discomfort, yeah. Your body's not gonna change unless you kind of go in through a little discomfort, okay? Okay, so here's the key. Okay, listen up. I'm gonna start moving my hands. Both hands are on the outside of my right knee right now. I'm starting to get a nice stretch on the back left leg. That's kind of what we're looking for here, okay? Common mistake here is people either don't get a stretch, they don't walk far enough, or they go too far too fast. So what we're looking for, as we all are gonna be in different places and different thresholds, is you guys are gonna find your one, level one, okay? So I'm gonna incrementally start looking for my first signs of, of tension, right? My left leg, I'm at level one right now. So when you find your first signs of level one, it's gonna be different than mine, could be before or after it, drop to your right elbow and open up your arms. So I'm really opening up that chest. I'm actively pressing through the elbow on the floor, open that chest. Now I'm gonna take my right, excuse me, my left arm to my left ear, and I'm reaching. Now I'm gonna go back to the ground, and I'm gonna walk my right elbow a little bit more to the right. I'm at level two now. Open up. Open that chest. I'm going fishing, look at me. Take that wrist, go fishing a little bit. Now I'm going left arm to left ear. Big reach. Good, take it back to the ground one more time. I'm going to my final location. Okay, open chest. Frame that head, big reach. Woo! and incrementally walk back to starting position 
And let's go back to windshield wipers and we're gonna go to the other side now. So where are human beings tight? Where are they restricted the most? Hip rotators, right? Pecs, sternocleidomastoid neck, scalenes, front part of the shoulder, this whole area right here from doing this all day, right? Our lats, right? Our hip flexors, quads. We have all types because from sitting at a computer all day long, guys. So this sequence alone, along with that couch stretch, opens up everything, everything. So now I'm on the left side, okay? Open up that back leg. I'm right over top of left shin, upright posture. Whew, this side is tight for me. And I'm hinging over my left shin. And I'm kind of just using my arms to kind of push me into some nooks and crannies. I'm gonna keep using it. I'm gonna bring it back. I don't think people use that enough. So I'm bringing it back. Get in the nooks and crannies. We gotta get in the corners. We gotta get some WD-40 in there, man. Okay, I'm hinging, shifting, side to side, side to side, hinging. Okay, changing angle. Torso over top of femur now, I'm over top of the knee. I'm hinging. I'm looking around, I'm going fishing, what can you find? Look for some discomfort. Look for some tightness. Hang out in there when you find it. Okay, now I'm, I've already got a nice stretch over here. Both hands to the outside of the left knee, and let's start to go to your level one. Okay, I found mine. When you find it, what are you gonna do? Drop down the left elbow, open up right arm. Let's go. Let's do it, baby. Play. I'm going fishing, playing with my wrist, playing with that whole arm line. Right arm to right ear, big reach. Take it back to the ground. Let's walk a little bit more, I'm incrementally winding things up. I'm at level two now. Find your level two. You should feel a big stretch, not only on the right side of the leg, but now we're on the pec. The arm, the wrist, okay, the neck. Don't be afraid to move around in there. See what you can find. Hang out. Right arm to right ear. Reach. Third and final. Back to the ground. I'm moving my left elbow to my third and final location. If you don't feel a stretch here, you're not at level three. Find your level three. But don't go to level six. There's no reason, you got nowhere to go. That's why you gotta find your level one and then incrementally go to level two and then your level three should be your final location, should be your end range. Arm to your ear, big reach. Hang out. Okay, and let's swoop back to starting position here. Windshield wipers. Windshield wipers. Yeah, you guys should be feeling good right now. All right, let's take it up, Lila. Come on over here, guys. A couple more things just to show you what you can use in your own house, okay? So now let's open up chest and lats, and then I wanna do a hip, uh, another hip movement. Let's just do it right here where we're on the couch, okay? So here's a couch right here. This is my limitation. I really, it's a modified pigeon pose to you guys, and this is something we all need to work on. You can do this right after you do your couch stretch. But it's like a 90-90 or a pigeon pose. Oh, I'm bad here. I need to work on this big time. But the goal here is to get your knee on the couch, right? And the shin is level with the couch. I'm hanging out here. We just did this on the ground, a variation of this on the ground. But you can always find stuff in your house like a couch or a table or a, um, the countertop of your kitchen. But I'm hanging out in there, hanging out. Whew, that is tight. I'm gonna switch sides. Most males are, this is where we lack. That pigeon pose range of motion. I need this bad, I need more of this. I need to practice what I'm preaching while I'm watching TV. Of course, we don't watch a lot of TV, do we? That's the problem. No, not no. really. Hanging out, hanging out, beautiful, right? So if you wanna get rid of lower back pain, You've got to do the couch stretch. You've got to do the modified pigeon pose right here. 
And that core four matrix we did on the floor over there, that whole sequence will help you so much if you have low back pain, but not, not only low back pain, upper back, shoulder, neck, knee pain, right? We're moving and add that in with our joint by joint mobility sequence and you're gonna be good, but you gotta put it into action. All right, well, let's walk around here, please. Look at this beautiful French bulldog over here. So look, all we're going for now, guys, is a doorknob. All right, we need a doorknob, all right? It's a great lat and upper back stretch, okay? It's a doorknob, so find one, okay? What I'm gonna do here is grab it underhand, okay? I'm gonna put my arm on the wall here. So I'm pulling with my right arm and pushing with my left arm, okay? So I'm actively pushing and pulling. Don't rip the doorknob off, but I'm kind of shifting weight side to side here, I'm rotating. I'm actively pushing and pulling to really hit that upper back. We all need more thoracic rotation. It's a great stretch for the upper back. Let's switch sides. Left hand, cross body underneath, right hand on the door, okay? I'm pushing and pulling. I'm pushing with my right arm and pulling with my left. And I can shift my weight side to side, and I'm just kind of going fishing here. Don't be afraid to look around and kind of change positions and change your hip angle and change the way your, where your body is moving to kind of find the area that you're looking for, and that's the upper back, okay? So where else do we need to go before we finish thing, this thing up? We gotta go to the chest stretch. So let's go to any wall, any wall, guys. We'll go right here. This is easy. So 90-90 stretch, we're at 90 degrees. I'm gonna step into this. Common mistake made on this stretch, on this type of stretch is once again, we go into hyperextension at the lower back. I don't want that. Tuck the hips underneath you and lean into this, but without going into lumbar hyperextension. So I'm hanging out right here. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to go the other way, right arm up. Remember, I'm not hyperextending. Tuck the pelvis underneath you and lean into this. And allow the front part, the anterior portion of that shoulder and chest to open up. 30 seconds there, even upwards of 60 seconds there. Where you need it the most, it needs time. So static stretching has its place. I love movement-based stretching like we're doing over there. But sometimes your body needs to kind of melt into those new positions and you got to hang out there and kind of breathe through them. All right, so 30 to 60 seconds on some of those stretches like the hip flexor stretches and the, and the, the glute stretches on the, on, the, on the couch right there. Those are things where I can even sit into some of these things for upwards of two minutes at a time, right? A two minute pigeon pose, a two minute couch stretch. You know, challenge yourself to hang out in these uncomfortable positions so your body is forced to change because if you're not doing it enough and you're not spending enough time there your body is not going to change and therefore your aches and pains are probably never going to go anywhere either all right all right let's go to some q a let me see what we've got over here lila p i think we got a lot darren morton in the house what's up kenya kirk shepherd what up mark kim green hello hey lily jeanette all right, do we have any questions, guys? Let me flip this around a little bit. Let me see if I know how to flip it around. Oh, here, I flip it around. Oh, I already had it flipped around. Thanks, Lila. All right, all right, any questions? We've been going for quite a while now, but I wanted to give you guys some stuff that you could use in your own home. You don't need a gym. No gym, no problem, right? I love that cliche, no gym, no problem. Use it or lose it. Success leaves clues. You know me, I'm the cliche guy. But look, let me know. What's up, Attila, Michelle, Gia, Connie? PVC pipe works great. If you don't have a Cuban mop, you're a loser. I mean, it's as simple as that. You got to have a Cuban mop. I'm just kidding. If you don't have a Cuban mop, you can use a dowel rod, a PVC pipe. You can use a curtain rod, a broomstick, a rake. I don't care. Just be careful. Poke yourself in the eye or anything like that. A shovel. A hiking stick. A hiking stick, sure. Yeah. A cane. I mean, hopefully you're not like doing this with a, with, with a cane because you can fall over and break a hip. But anyway, and listen, if you need 
If you also need a the joint by joint mobility sequence that I gave you guys today, I did it standing. I have a seated version that I've done before. Uh, Gia, you reminded me of it, seeing you here. I have a seated version that I did for Gia's mom, Mavis. And so if you want a video of doing joint by joint mobility work from a seated position in a chair, I have it. So just comment that you want that video. And uh, if you need the ebook that contains this stuff, plus a ton of other great tools, plus the theory behind all this and the why behind it, um, text me and I'll send you over the ebook. But man, I hope you guys feel as good as I do. Thank you for, for trusting me. Thank you for being here with me um, today. I'm going to try to give you guys more value and as much content as possible, especially while I have your attention, you're at home and, and you guys are craving material right now and I want to educate you and empower you so to in, in, to add these things to your toolbox so you can you know apply this stuff right it's all about application it's all about application this this girl right here thank you for the camera work that was awesome you're welcome if you guys need me for anything comment share this with anybody that you think could benefit from this stuff because I I think it's powerful information for you guys to have and I hope you feel great today and as you use it going forward, please let me know how it's affected your life. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. Love you. Be safe.